a face so familiar, yet changed beyond recognition. Who is Joji? I remember my first time on YouTube. No, it was not watching Filthy Frank TV. In fact, if I was exposed to content such as this, at my age, I probably wouldn't be on YouTube till this day. A sheltered nine-year-old like myself was perfectly fine enjoying plenty of friendly gaming personalities on the site. But anyone who uses the internet knows you can't avoid the uncanny and haunted side of YouTube forever. It will find you eventually. In fact, my discovery of this danger zone did start with this one man. The one man who so-called started it all. Filthy Frank. A master of this estranged genre of comedy so concentrated and popular online. The disturbingly offensive masterpieces such as Vomit Cake, Hair Cake, and Human Cake, and everything else was a perfect fit for my middle school brain. The videos and music were immature, gross, vulgar, and genius. Just what I like to see. I was frankly obsessed with this new world I had discovered. The fact he was funny, but also had musical talent was astonishing. And all his friends and collaborators would also soon become my favorite YouTube personalities. Idubs, Max Mofo, Filthy Frank, and anything for views were perhaps the most iconic group of characters on YouTube till this day. And although having the perception of being a complete joke album, Pink Season highlighted new talents in George, especially in music production. But this video is not about Filthy Frank. While I clearly enjoyed that era of George Miller, he has moved on. In late 2017, George made the decision to quote, make music that I wanted to hear. He was always stuck in a place where he couldn't progress forward, always creating videos in a character he enjoyed but slowly grew repetitive and that became detrimental to his health. George had previously tried to create more serious music that could appeal to a wider audience, with the release of songs like Thom and You Suck Charlie, under a new identity, Joji. The melancholic lo-fi singles were posted on SoundCloud in 2015 and 2016. They were not promoted to his audience in the slightest, though fans began to connect the dots and it prompted him to officially announce the release of several songs. George had always had a passion for composing music, and as a way to promote his music, he started his YouTube channel. Unexpectedly though, the channel had an immense amount of success due to his deranged persona he put on for the camera. He had no other choice than to roll with it and have a good time, but it slowly pushed him into a box, limiting his creative freedom. Oftentimes, you have to kill off a character in order to advance the story. George knew if he wanted to pursue his passion and continue his own story, he would have to sacrifice the name of Filthy Frank. This masterfully created universe of comedy that was praised and claimed to be the birth of a legacy was suddenly killed off. But then, a few highly anticipated singles were released under 88 Rising. I Don't Wanna Waste My Time, Rain On Me, and Will He. The down-tempo and minimalistic production was quite reminiscent of the old SoundCloud Joji back in 2015 and 2016. As expected, many fans were upset with the new George Miller, but then again, plenty were excited for the new Joji. It wasn't about pleasing the fans though, it was always about following his passion and making music more people could enjoy. In November 2017, In Tongues, his first EP was gracefully handed to the world. A series of songs about love and heartache, covering topics from his inner demons to suicide. There's something so catchy about this EP's slowly methodical composition featuring prominent drums and echoed vocals. But this series of songs isn't just about his relationships. The drowning and strangling album art is connected to his discontent as always being known as the, quote, the guy yelling on the internet making semi-valid points here and there. In fact, almost every article about In Tongues or Joji in general begins with a nod to his past. I mean, this video did, so yeah. The EP peaked at number 58 on the Billboard 200, which is not bad for his first full-length project as Joji. 
finally establishing Joji as someone who was serious about making music. Following the EP was Joji's debut studio album, Ballads One, a 12 song melancholic, soulful, and more pop oriented masterpiece, featuring songs ranging from extremely depressing to cheerful and upbeat. The album's sound is still unique, but compared to his previous creations, Ballads One is much less abstract, and there's nothing wrong with that, especially with songs like No Fun and Test Drive. The variety and particular Joji sound lent itself very well on the charts, reaching number 3 on the US Billboard 200, as well as number 1 on Billboard's R&B slash hip hop, the first Asian American to do so. The series of music videos for this album were all extremely successful as well, each video at least landing 20 million views, and Slow Dancing in the Dark getting over 80 million views. With the unique and stylistic visuals featuring halo weapons, a half man half goat, a hanging straitjacket, and much more, it's safe to say George hasn't lost his imagination, just merely transferred it into a different medium, and in his own way, evolved. More recently, Joji has gifted us with a single titled Sanctuary, a song about a potential lover and their part as being a safe place or sanctuary for him. His melodic and high-pitched vocals are accompanied by a Star Trek themed music video with quite the big twist. This single demonstrates how far Joji has come and how much he's changed, from his early lo-fi experimental SoundCloud days to making a pretty standard pop song that more people can listen to and enjoy. Some would argue Joji has lost his edge with his new direction, but I don't think edge was ever the intention. He just kind of wanted to make music. Joji is someone who played a character for a big part of his life, restricting and limiting himself to a funny guy. Like many people, he fell into a one-dimensional figure, always afraid to break the mold. Sure, Filthy Frank was successful and praised by many, but that wasn't the end-all be-all for George. He wanted something more. He knew that following his passion was more important even if the same people were not going to support him. Being yourself is especially hard when you play the character your whole life. But George knew he had to try, and Joji, otherwise known as George, was the result. And I think it's safe to say he did a pretty damn good job. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed leave a like, if you didn't leave a dislike, subscribe if you want to, and put the notifications on because YouTube's definitely not going to send you my videos. It has been a while since I uploaded, that is for sure. I've pretty much risen from the grave, and the reason why is because I really didn't have an idea, but now I do and I have a couple ideas, so videos will be coming out more frequently. So look forward to that, and I have a Patreon. And specifically, thank you to Bread Has No Taste and Cluster. You guys are pretty awesome. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.